Hey, what's up, Jared Noble, back with another video uh, for remixing. And if you checked out the last video that I did, what we did was we took this Bobby Caldwell down for the third time, and we basically sped it up and layered some kicks under it and then pulled out the bass that's inside of the track, called it a remix, and called it a day. So basically, what we're going to do today is I'm going to add more to that production so that way we can beef it up a little bit more and make it a little bit more interesting. What, uh, what I want to show you though today is basically what I did was I found a snare and we're going to lay in, layer in the snare because the snare in the track was kind of weak. So I just wanted to beef that up a bit. And basically I got this snare AME2. And what makes it really simple is that because I went in and uh, laid in all these kicks already, I can kind of use those kicks as a template and I can just drop this snare right at the beginning of this kick. Now, if you want to, you can pull this back a little bit and then move the, the snare up so it kind of hits right when the kick does. But I actually, I liked it lagging a little bit behind. So that's why I have it set up like that. And then basically you just drop in that snare on the two and the four of each one of these. And that's pretty much it for that. So what I'll do real quick is I'll play you the original joint just in case you haven't heard this yet uh, or if you missed that last video. So this is what the Bobby Caldwell joint sounds like. And then if we add in that kick, it sounds like this. And now when we add in that snare, it sounds like this. I'll turn it up so you can hear the snare. Cool. And all I did there was just kind of bring the volume down, just to kind of sit the snare back in the track a little bit. So now we've got, we got a kick and a snare. And the other thing that I noticed that I want to point out is if I double click on this track, uh, you'll see in here under this transpose and detune, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to detune the track a little bit because I was trying to find the key of the song. So that way I could show you a couple extra things. And what I found was that it's actually kind of between two scales right now. I don't know if it's the record, uh, the way it got pressed or like over time, but it was just out of tune. Um, I don't know if they recorded that way or maybe it was in the pressing or something, but basically we want the key, we want to find the key of the song so we can layer in some other melodic stuff. Now what I'll show you is I'll pull up a piano so that way you can see how we're going to tune this. All right, so now I have this floating keyboard up here so you can see the different notes. And what I want to show you really quick is if I play this song, generally what you can do is you can just kind of press the keys. And whatever note that you can kind of play throughout the song, you'll find the key of the song, um, roughly. So this works pretty well a lot of times. But what I found was, as I was playing every single note on the keyboard, nothing really sat right. So I'll play this for you real quick. And what I found is it's between B and C. So if I play either one of these, neither of them fit. Now I could go through and play any one of these other ones and it's still going to do the same. It's still going to sound dissonant. So what I found was I've, uh, I tried to toot it down. So if I take it down to about 46 semitones, you'll hear that it fits with the B scale. So B is here. So that's our B scale. So then every note that I play in the B scale kind of fits with the song. But I was kind of doing a little bit of research and I found that uh, a lot of people are saying that this song is actually in C because the chords that he plays are C major and F major. So uh, if we go back in the opposite direction, we go positive about 38 semitones. Now it'll be in C. So you see that C and F now fit in really well with this. So that's just the melodic side and trying to figure out the key of the song. Because if you want to do a remix and you want to be able to play notes along with that song, you want to know the key of the song so that way you can play the right notes. So now that we have the key of the song, we can mess around with some other stuff. And what I'll do is I'll lace in that snare for the entire track and then we'll jump back into this. 
All right, now as I'm layering in these snares, I just want to show you a really quick and easy way to do this. There are plugins that you can use for this, uh, but manual way is just as good too. So you can go highlight a kick, use the arrow key and paste. So we copy the snare, then we go up to the kick that we want to line it up with. And again, we're just using these kicks as templates. So this is great since we already took the time out to go in and line up the kicks with all of these. All right, so now that I have all of the snares laid in, all the fun work is done and we get to now do all of the boring stuff, right? We get to chop it up and have some fun. So um, you can see that we have the kicks and the snares kind of all layered in. There are all these little lines under here. And what we can do is, one thing that we wanna do is we wanna highlight all the way till the end and then holding shift and the arrow key going down to highlight all of those. And then we're gonna actually drag it all back a couple bars. So let's give ourselves a little bit of an intro. Something that we can mess around with. Uh, let's make it four bars. Okay, so now we have that. And what we can do is we can take the drums. Uh, let's see, we need four bars. So we'll get to there. Highlight that, copy it, go back to the start and paste. So now we have kick snare. Cool. And if you remember, we got the chords. So we figured out that the chords were C and F. So what we're gonna use is C major. And then we're gonna use F major. Now the interesting thing about this is the way they played it, uh, at least on the organ part, not so much the guitar, the car's, guitar is just kind of riffing over top of everything. But if you listen to the background of this little organ that's going in there, that's kind of keeping the, the main melody of the song with just the chord progressions, it, he's basically just hopping between C and F. But the way that he's doing it is he's just using two notes and then filling it out with a third note. So he's not even doing a triad chord. So if you look at the C major chord, we have C, we have E, and we have G. So that's the C major chord. Now what he did was he actually took out one of the notes and he's only playing two. He's playing uh, the C, or actually, let me rewind it. Um, what he did was he inverted the chord. So he took the E or the G up here and moved it down. So they're playing this C chord, uh, a C major with the invert. And then what he's doing is he's playing the C, just the, the G and the C and then he's moving it up and then playing the whole chord. So if you listen, let me take it back to where we can hear this song. So just listen to the chords. So what he's playing there is this. The two notes, then moving it up step, keeping with the G, but now playing the D, and then playing the Triad. So I'll play it again so you can hear it. And that's all it is. Just that. And then moves on to the F after that. And then the F is just a straight F major. I could be wrong, but... That's all I hear out of it. And basically what I did was I already set up the, uh, the chords over here. So you'll see that we have uh, just those two notes uh, and then we're moving it up. Oops, back it up. So the G and the C and then the G and the D and then those three notes. So that is the chords and the way it plays for this part. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's another thing. So I noticed he plays the F, then he plays it again here, and then he drops out the C note. So he, uh, it makes it sound like it goes lower without actually going lower. And the, the kind of the same with this, it makes it sound like it's, he's playing a higher note or higher chord. When he doesn't really change the chord, he just adds in this third note. So if I mute that, So that's what we have, and I'll bring this back over into the 
arrangement view. And so what you can do is you can start to play around with some of the different stuff here. So we have kicks, we have snares. Uh, oh, and I also layered in a couple of other little fun things in uh, just using machine. Not much, just uh, just teeny tiny little bits, just something to give it a little extra spice. So I noted there were no, there was like, um, if you listen, there's like this little hi hat going on in there. Just on that like off beats, ta 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 ta. So I just threw in a couple extra little extra percussion kind of things, a little shaker, an old tambourine guy. Here, I'll even show you just so you can see what's actually there. So again, on the off notes, I got these guys, and then I just have this little shaker going on up here. Again, just teeny tiny little things. So then we can go back to the beginning. Now we have nothing playing. We just have our piano loop and the drums that we put together. And we can even loop that out and make it play a little bit longer if we wanted this to be in as a part of the song. Cool. And, uh, we could also change it too. It doesn't have to be piano. Um, I can go into contact and find myself an organ and make it fit a little bit better with the track uh, just to kind of fill out that space. Or we could add a synth. We could do all kinds of fun stuff. And you can also have some fun with this too and start to chop out sections of the song. So we can copy this, go back to the beginning, paste it, and then maybe start chopping out different parts. I don't know. Let's just see what that sounds like. It sounds terrible, but we can play around with it. So, um, oh yeah, I like that. That's grooving. There we go. So we're starting to put a phrase together, basically, just trying to make our own phrase out of what was already there. So this is having some fun with chopping and sampling, and this is really, really basic. We're not even getting too crazy with it yet. So just having some fun making a little bit of an intro. All right, so we kind of got two separate things going on here. I'm just going to loop this one and see if we can't make it jam a little bit better. So this first one could be like an intro. We could jam that for like maybe four, four bars and then switch up to this new one. We'll take this one, and we're going to do duplicate time, command shift D. So now we have that doubled. So it's going to start from the top. I think I want to double the length of that actually. Cool. So now we got a bit of an intro that we can play around with. So if we listen to it from the top. Yeah, so that's kind of jamming. Okay, so we have these guys chopped up, quasi arranged. And the only other thing I need to do now is just kind of print out these guys that we had before. So we're gonna take these into our drum print. And let's see, we're gonna solo out this guy, print it down. We're gonna call this guy Shaker. And this one, Tambourine. Hit record. Cool, I've got that. So I just recorded in and pull out the other one. So now we're going to take the tambourine and record that in. Cool. 
Cool, so now we have those. I can take the machine and turn that off for now. And then just drag these guys into the arrangement view. Those guys in here. And we'll take these guys out. Take this one out for now. bring that guy back in over here so now you can see what we got going on all right so this is the start of the song always good to name and label things so you know what's going on all right so now we have the start of the song we'll add these guys in there and we'll take it out during like the verses so that way it gives it a little bit of movement Just call it instrumental. And we'll take all these guys, copy them over. piano in, see what that sounds like now. Definitely not, but it's nice to know we have it. So let's find... record that in. Oops. And do that. Cool. So we got those in there. next chords are. Cool, we can just rock with that for now. Nice. So then we got those. Might work the quantize those just a teeny bit. Get those where they need to be. Okay, so what I want to do now is kind of wrap things up and bring it on home. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> this um, this kind of, if you, if you remember what we have is we have this intro that we created. Then we have <clears throat> the layout of the song, which is kind of the start section of verse another instrumental section, another verse, and then another instrumental section, kind of a long one, and then moves into this kind of chord change. So what I'll do is <clears throat> I'm going to separate this, and we're going to go back to the beginning, 
and grab this out and just turn this into our outro. So then we'll grab all these guys, highlight all that, let's see. And then what we want to do is, yeah, we already got that. Cool. Go back to here, loop out eight bars, and FaceTime. Cool, so now we have all of that stuff back in there. And we can basically just kind of mute all that. Uh, I don't want to delete for now, we'll just mute it for now. And we'll mute out all those other kicks and snares. That's fine. So we have this instrumental breakdown that leads into our outro. So what we'll do is just tag that as the outro. Bam. Got it. Okay, and then we'll just do a little choppity chop just to make it kind of tie into this little outro. So I'll just take this guy, duplicate it, duplicate it, half it, duplicate it. So now you have kind of an outro. So for the, for kind of the, the way that I DJ and the style that I DJ, I tend to do kind of quick mixes. Um, so I would probably, I probably wouldn't let this play out for the entire three minutes or however long this song actually is. So I'd probably start working in the next song right around here on this instrumental breakdown. So having this outro will just kind of give me a little something extra to play with. Uh, so... Well, the last thing that I want to do is now that we have all of that is turn off loop and we can highlight all of this stuff because that's what we're going to bounce out. Uh, and you can even leave, you can even add in, um, keep in these kicks too. If you want to add like a little kick outro, just if you want to just have those drums just to use. So you could use it as like a cue point. Um, and then the last, last thing I want to do is go into virtual tape. So I have on the master channel, I have this virtual tape machine just to liven things up a bit and I have this uh, compressor which is just a, a limiting compressor and so I'll turn this on go back to the beginning so you can hear what it sounds like without it So we're really, we're really just trying to glue everything together and make it sound tight and make it sound good. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it for those. You could also add in probably an EQ on this tambourine and clean things up a little bit. Ah, those guys are good. Not much going on there. Let's move it over here. And all that little pops and clicks is just digital distortion. I like to keep the buffer size low so I can talk on here and not have a lot of latency. So I'll just bump this up just so you can hear it without all the digital crap. All right, so this is what it sounds like. Um, and one other thing that I'll do for you is I'll bounce out a copy of this and I'll post a link to it so that way you can download it as well. I'll upload it to my SoundCloud uh, and you can go check it out there. So uh, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, my name is JR Noble again, and you can check me out at jrnoble.co if you're not already on my website. And you can also, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or drop a comment below to let me know um, if there's anything else, like if this left you any with any questions or um, if you got something out of this, let me know what you liked about it so that way I can continue to do that. So that's it for today. And I want to thank you for checking out this video and I'll see you around again soon.